Mm. So, uh, so bad day all round. Okay. Um, I guess you, looking at people who are in support of it, you know, where Port of Tilbury or Port of Dover, uh, Essex County Council, uh, the government, um, do you think it's um, a matter of economics has spoken? Well, yeah, yeah, yes, I do. I think, I think that, but also I feel sorry for those people to a certain extent as well because they've been sold, they've been sold hope, hope that this is going to relieve congestion at the current crossing and it's not going to do that. Highways England have been, you know, been very manipulative with the, with the information that they've shared and they've distributed. Um, but the, the, the cold hard facts are these. Option three, Highways England say, will remove one in eight cars, 14%. But by 2025, when they want the crossing, the new, the, the new road to be open, traffic inflation data, their own traffic inflation data, says traffic will, and, and vehicle usage will grow by 15%. So the problems at the current crossing will still persist and it will still be over capacity in 2025. So the local people that have supported, what they've actually supported is they've supported anything. Anything that they believe will help the current problem, but they've not dug into the detail or they've actually been, uh, they've, they've not, uh, uh, you know, they've not, taken the time to understand the data that Highways England are presenting mm. because their own data proves that this will not solve the congestion problem at Dartford Crossing but it will unlock brown belt land for them to build on. It will unlock uh, you know, some, some, some jobs. That would be for thorough residents by the way. Mm. It will unlock some of those benefits but that's but then we need, we need, we need, to, we need to ask the question of what was the what was the intention of the, the crossing? Was it to fix congestion at the Dartford crossing or was it to pr provide economic growth for the area? Mm. If that is the case, then the, cons the consultation which they conducted was ultimately flawed and deceptive, which it was, it was anyway, um, because for half of the cons consultation, option A wasn't even included in the documentation they sent out. So mm. couple that with the flawed consultation, couple that with the, the, uh, the data that Highways England have, have, have sent out and couple that with local enterprise uh, other MPs um, uh, surrounding boroughs they've just supported whatever option was quickest mm. or cheapest so uh, I, you know I, yeah it's not a good day so what happens now should everybody take the advice really going back to the um, Thames Crossing meeting back in February of last year when Jackie Doyle Price said deal with it and get the best deal possible? Is that what we should do now? Well, I, I mean, I, 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 I disagree with everything that Jackie Dore Price is saying. You know, um, I think, however, in this instance, even Jackie Dore Price acknowledged that this route was the most destructive route for Thurrock. What needs to happen now is, a, in my opinion, and this is what uh, I'll be taking the com campaign group through, is we need a two-pronged approach. Number one, that is, we still oppose this route. We still think it will not add the value or the benefits that Highways England think it will. Plus, it will carve up 495,000 square metres of Greenbelt land and, uh, uh, you know, carve up the entire borough, including people's homes and businesses. Um, but at the same time, we need to be able to have dialogue with Highways England. We need to work with our elected officials in the council and our MPs, including Jackie Doyle Price, um, to make sure that if Highways England persevere and, and, and insistent on getting this route through, then we need to make sure that we are protecting ourselves and we get the best out of it for Thurrock and the people and the, and the residents of it. And that includes things like, how can we protect and save as many residential homes as possible? How can we limit and mitigate the pollution um, impact that's going to uh, obviously increase um, over in 2025? How can we save as many businesses as possible? How, how much of this route can we put underground, as an example? All of these things we have to be able to discuss with Highways England. But to do that, we've got to have a seat at the table. We can't just put our fingers in our ears and pretend it's not happening. So, two-pronged approach. We will still firmly say we disagree. We do not want this, this 
road uh, route through Thurrock. But at the same time, we need to absolutely have dialogue and a seat at the table with Highways England to protect the residents of Thurrock and our land. Well, I think you've just answered my question, that therefore, that you're far, as a group, you're far from finished. Oh, the fight's not over. Mm. We always knew that the, when they announced their preferred option, whatever it may be, um, we always knew that really that was when the fight was going to begin. Um, and I fully intend to support the, uh, you know, the, the, the very vast majority of uh, the population of Thurrock who think this is a very bad idea. And I genuinely believe that people who think this is a good idea are misinformed. Um, but we're not done yet. We're still going to, uh, you know, we're still going to uh, put our point across. But at the same time, we want to have um, open dialogue with Highways England. We want to express our concerns in a mature and professional way. But at the same time, express that we have, we have genuine concerns about the... Um, uh, the route doing what Highways England was set out to do, which is fix congestion at the Dartford crossing. And this is the opportunity for us now to sit with them, to make sure that we 